everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Lauren from Guthrie and Ganny, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the recording of my sewing and dressmaking and fabric themed question and answer session that I did on the Instagram platform on Monday the 12th of December. This is the last one of these that I'm going to be doing for 2022 so I will see you again in the new year. You can check out my profile on Instagram for the exact date of when that will be but in this last edition for 2022 I've got lots of things to show you and share with you tonight. I've got loads of beautiful fabrics out in the shop. I'm going to be answering questions that have been sent in beforehand so some some have been sent in on YouTube, some have been sent Instagram, some have been emailed. So I've got a really nice mix of people looking for some help and advice with their sewing and dressmaking projects and then looking for recommendations or fabric, different fabric and pattern pairings as well. So you will see me read the comments that are coming in as I chat live, just so you've got a bit of context about what I am talking about and what people are saying during the time. If you do want to ask me a question that I can answer in a future session, feel free to leave a comment. Um, below on this video and give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. There's probably going to be one more in 2022 and then yeah, back in 2023 for a whole new year of lots of lovely fabric and sewing related content. So I'm going to switch to the live video now. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you soon. Good evening, good evening, good, good Monday evening. I hope you're all doing well at the start of this week and that you're yeah not feeling too overwhelmed that you're enjoying the run up to Christmas not getting too stressed out like me <laughs> hi everyone yeah it's pretty chilly in the UK somebody's chilly in Essex right now I can imagine Somebody else is quite excited that they've made it live. They always forget. That's okay. Remember, I just always save it on Instagram and on YouTube as well. But it's really nice to see you all. So, yeah, last one of 2022 tonight. Quite a marathon that's been, but a very enjoyable one, of course. I do like running marathons, although I haven't done one for lots of years now, but you know. Um, okay, so I've got lots of things to show you tonight. Loads of questions have been sent in beforehand. Quite a lot of people like looking for advice and stuff tonight. So hopefully there's got going to be lots of tips and help and everything that you can get um, to inspire your projects and your sewing. And I've got lots of fabrics as well. Some new fat, some we got a delivery of fabrics today as well. So I'm going to tell you what's in that. Not all of it's online yet, um, but it will be tomorrow. So. Um, it's a little heads up for that. If there was like something you've been waiting for, it might be back in again. Um, but before I get started into all of that, I think some people are still joining in. Feel free to ask me any questions as I'm chatting. If you want to ask me anything and I'll, depending on what question I'm on, I'll try and keep up or it might be that I have to sort of go back and um, check. Okay, we've got some international people tonight as well. Somebody's in New Zealand. Good morning to you. Somebody else is watching from Nevis in the Caribbean. Now that sounds absolutely beautiful. Nice and warm. Um, okay, Julie's asking, is your top the Nico? It's very nice. It is, well spotted. This was actually the Nico that was in a kit. Eh, was it last year? Can't remember now. Um, yeah, I think it was last year. And I've worn it a lot. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd wear it because I like wearing my little Christmassy necklace. So I need like a plain top to wear with that. Somebody else is in New Jersey, hello, and someone in Alabama. Hello everybody. Okay, somebody's asking what's your favourite sewing machine? I don't, I've mostly just used brother sewing machines to be honest. Um, I don't really know, have that much experience of using other ones. I like my brother machine. Um, the specific model is a VQ2 and I've been using that for probably about three or four years. It was um, gifted to me as like a, yeah, a gift. It's kind of on loan from brother, um, but I do really like it. It's good. Um, somebody's asking, will the double gauze fabric included in the Agnes kit be available to buy? Yes, it will be. Um, I'll see if we can get that online this week, but if you drop us an email, we can let you know when it's available. But yeah, we, we do have some left over from that kit. So yeah, you'll be able to buy it. Um, I'm in Coventry, is that exotic? Yeah, I think it is, you know, in its own special way, I would say. I'll give you that one. Okay, so 
I did just want to remind you about the kits that got launched last week, the Sewing Society kits. Um, first of all, I want to say that we did sell out of the, the Noodle Head Making Backpack kit super quickly. It was really, really popular. But we do have some of the fabric that was included in the kit now available to buy by the meter. Um, we had three different colourways. I'm hoping I've got all the samples here to show you. Yeah, I do. Um, this is the olive colourway here. And I'm hoping that the light can kind of pick that up. It's called a Bedford cord. Which, so it's a bit different from normal corduroy. It doesn't have a nap, but it's got these kind of like ridges in it. But it's a really lovely, more sort of like medium to heavier weight cotton fabric. as 100% cotton. It's non-stretch. And I think it would also look really good for some jacket patterns as well. Like the Friday Pattern Company Elford would look good in it. I think the Green Line Thayer would look good in it as well. So th that kind of style of jacket, I think, would work really well with this fabric too. And also, you know, it looks good um, with the backpack too. So that was the olive. And then we've also had the tan and the navy. Um, the tan and the navy. So we didn't, we didn't have enough of like every component to make up more kits, but we did have a few bits and pieces left. So what we have had available is listed online and um, so we did have a few zips left a few zips left and um, and then we, we can get more of the webbing so we've got more webbing on the way and we've also got some like cut length pieces as well that you can buy too and um, but yeah the fabric is in the just arrived section you'll see that there and um, but yeah they were super popular so sorry if you missed out on that somebody else is asking what other fabric would you recommend for the backpack so I've actually made this before a few years ago. I'm just seeing if I can find the fabric that I was looking for. And I made it out of the millerine fabric that we used to have that we unfortunately don't stock anymore. Um, but it was like a waxed canvas. So, I mean, you can get various like waxed cotton canvases. Um, Merchant and Mills do lots of them, so you can make it out of that. We do have this one, which is a water repellent outerwear fabric khaki. It's 1460 a meter, and you could make it out of that as well. And then obviously the bag would have water repelling properties. So yeah, you could you could do that too. Um, and then, so that's the backpack. And then the other kit, which we do have some left of, is the Megan Nielsen Hovia. So we had three lovely colours of this one. Um, I did do like a little sort of release video on my YouTube channel as well. So if you haven't seen that and you want to sort of see a bit more detail about the coats, I'll refer you to that. But these are the three colours here. We had the khaki green, the bottle green, and the mist grey or calm grey um, and they've all got different um, quilted designs on them so diamond wave and lines so it's a water repellent fabric it's quite quite a specialized sort of technical fabric it's really lovely it's got a matte finish it's anti-static and um, it's yeah it's lovely windproof water repellent um, and yeah it's a it's double-sided so it's like the same fabric both sides and we give you the binding we show you how to make a really lovely finish inside here that all those seam allowances are just hidden there and um, so you can make like a cute little crop version with little pockets or you can make the mid-length version as well which is what the other two lengths are and then you can optionally also do the version that's got the exterior binding so you get enough binding in the kit to do the inside seam allowances and then you could do the collar version or if you wanted to do this version then you could there's like a little add-on bundle that you can get for the extra binding um, and the binding matches the fabric exactly it's exactly the same fabric so it gives like a really lovely professional finish to the garment it's that it's not it's not hugely thick the fabric but surprisingly quite warm because it's got that wadding in the inside it does actually feel quite cozy for being like a lighter weight jacket um, so yeah we do still have all of the colorways left in that for those of you that have ordered it already and um, you'll have seen the little notices on the listing and in the release letter as well about there being obviously we've got the royal mail strikes happening at the moment so that's kind of putting a spanner in the works in terms of being able to get um the kits out and uh, we'll not get them out we can get them out and um, but then getting them through the postal system was obviously a bit hit and miss but we had an added little you know fun thing to deal with <laughs> is there was a bit of an unexpected delay on the bulk of the fabric arriving for the hovia kits but I had word today that it is due and at the end of the week and we are like making plans for this very elaborate, like quick turnaround production line. <laughs> We're like really hoping we can get them out on Friday, which is the last Royal Mail Post day. So I I'm really trying for you guys. 
I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling confident. I can't guarantee it. I cannot guarantee it, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling confident. Um, okay, somebody's asking, could you make the clear coat with the material used for the Hovia kits? Um, hmm. I guess you could. I guess so, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think it should be fine. I think it should be fine. Um, somebody seemed to like my necklace. Thank you, Holly. Um, I made it at our little staff sort of Christmas workshop thing that we did last year with somebody locally. Um, now I'm really sorry because I can't remember her name now. That's really embarrassing. Um, but her like business or her sort of like company name is called Working Clasp. And yeah, she does like all this really laser cut, lovely laser cut jewelry. So we like made this in our little staff workshop last Christmas. Okay, somebody's asking, do you have any fellow sewers have experience of combined overlocker slash cover stitch? I have separate ones of each, but due to space and limited use with cover stitch, considering training up to a combo one. I'm not sure actually. I don't know if you can get a combo one. Does anybody else have a combo overlocker and cover stitch machine? Um, I like having a separate overlocker and cover stitch to save having to switch over the threading between the two. Fair point. Um, okay, so the other thing that I other things that I wanted to let you about let you know about are a few new fabrics that we've had. Um, we've had a couple of new lo really lovely viscose crepes, which are quite nice, nice for like a little top um, or a little blouse. This one here is the Forget Me Not viscose crepe fabric. It's nine ninety a meter, so it's got that sort of crepey texture, lovely and lightweight and sort of floaty and swishy it's really nice you can sort of see the scale of it there that lovely little forget me not pattern on it so we've got that one it's a, it's a black background on that one and then similar base cloth but more of a monochrome design we have also got this one here which is the linear floral stamp viscose crepe it's also 990 a meter and um, i'll open a little bit of that out so you can see so it's kind of like a sketchy sort of flowering kind of leaf design so again nice and floaty and lightweight so a couple of new viscose prints there and then they are like a little bit sort of odds and ends but nice in their own right so the next one is this one here how Christmassy is this color i love this one um where's my tag gone this is the ruby stretch cotton twill fabric and it's 1440 a meter so maybe a nice pair of christmas trousers or like a little skirt or something um, would be nice in that. I think you probably could make like more of a sort of structured dress as well. You know, it's more like a medium weight, it's gonna hold its shape, but beautiful color for this time of year. And then I'd also brought this one over to show you, which is quite interesting. The roll's quite big and heavy. I'll read to you what it is first. It's the double-faced check blended fabric. So it's 60 cotton, 36 polyester and 4% nylon. So it's basically like two layers of fabric really that are kind of bond like stitched together. Um, so it would be quite good if you were making something unlined because then, you know, the inside just kind of looks like a check. So one side is this sort of small scale kind of green and blue check like this. Um, and I also think the check's small enough that you could probably get away without worrying about pattern matching it because it's so small anyway. Um, and then on this side, another, uh, this looks like black and white to me. It's more like a kind of houndstooth sort of thing, um, which is really nice. It's almost like two fabrics in one, really. They look quite different. But yeah, that is, that is quite a, a new sort of interesting one. I don't know where the tag's gone for that. Um, and then, but yeah, we do have another couple of new things as well in the just arrived section and um, we've got a really nice anthracite wool and um, which feels lovely it's very thick it's gorgeous weight if you want to make a coat i couldn't actually fi find it in the time that i came over to like set up all the fabric so i don't have it to show you it's just a bit of a non-story really but yeah it is really nice you have to trust me on that um okay the other new things that i've got which aren't online yet we've had we did have this in a blue it's now randomly come in in this sort of like Kind of beigey color this puffer fabric here um so it's like a diamond a small sort of smaller scale diamond um it's double-sided as well and um, water repellent fabric it's probably a bit puffier i would say it's more like lofty than the puffer fabric that's in the hovia kits um, and then we have also had 
a, a restock of loads of the blended viscose knit fabric which is what we used to make the super popular Esme cardigan can you see in the window behind me here so this is the named clothing Esme cardigan and we have it available as a pdf on our website but you can either order it just as the pdf or you can order it with the printouts as well so the one in the window is made up in the mist grey colour um, which is on the roll here and um, it's actually quite a really big heavy floppy roll I won't pull it over just now probably do my back in but that's the, it's the mist grey that the sample's made up in but then we have also got back in stock this lovely sort of like sorry it's not got its tags yet so I can't actually tell you um, I can't actually tell you its actual colour but it's yeah it's like a lovely sort of like oceany blue colour lovely bright blue and then we've also got the navy one back in stock it was really popular too so these aren't online yet they'll get added on tomorrow um because they just yeah they just came today so we've not got it updated on the system yet and then we do also have a few new ones as well so let me just see if i can find them so this one is new it's similar to the one we had before but this one is double faced so it's different colour on either side so one side is like a kind of bluey colour the other side is like a yellowy colour so quite nice if you want like a contrast it's like two fabrics in one basically um, so again a bit of added interest if you um, are making something that's you know unlike like a nice loose cardigan then you see the other colour on the inside and then this one's also new as well this one is a black with a kind of beigey colour on one side so again a bit of contrast there um, and it, it, it feels really thick and cosy because it is basically like two layers of fabric that are bonded together and then oh I'm dropping these everything's all kind of falling in around me here lots of things falling down um, and then we've also got another two two of the double face ones let me just see if I can hang that up um this one is a light blue as well but then the reverse is a bit more like a kind of creamy color it's not as vibrant yellow as that other one and um, so it's like a little bit more subtle on the reverse side of that and then we have also got the green one back i think this was also like the last of the fabric that we could get which is why it's on a roll like weighs a ton um because i think once this is gone it's gone basically which is why we just kind of got what was left on the roll so yeah this is a green and then quite quite a warm beige i would say on the reverse so yeah a few different options there you could also make the true bias marlow out of it you could make the helen's closet blackwood so quite a few different cardigan options it would make a really nice toaster as well either version i think of the toaster would also be nice in that one and then of course the named esme cardigan as well um okay somebody's saying that they ordered the ruby fabric for lander pa pants that sounds really nice um okie doke so what else have i yeah, the red color is good is the stretch velour okay to wash also am i right in thinking it wouldn't work for a circle skirt because of the nap and needing to cut it out in the bias mm, yeah maybe you can wash it though because it's just polyester what is the difference between cover stitch and overlocker please and um, the overlocker sort of, you use it to sew seams and it kind of like almost sort of finishes off the edges and stops the fabric from fraying a cover stitch you would use for like doing hems um so that's kind of like very basic simplistic explanation i'm sure there's more um than that okay somebody's saying that they do have one that's a combo a baby lock one is that a combo overlocker and cover stitch checks um okay let's see terracotta tones i have got some terracotta fiber mood padded fabrics make a pauline alice aria jacket and i'd like to use some complementary liberty bias binding do you have any liberty with terracotta tones i'm sure we do what what i think we've got because we've got loads of different liberties and they're all pretty colorful what i think would probably be best is if you can email us a picture of your fabric and then we can like try and pick some out and send you some links to them and um, that would look good need to start a shopping list for fabric i feel like that all the time i love your top do you have any similar jersey rib type fabric on your website please so we do yes the other fabric that we did restock 
today as well is this one here in a really lovely blue colour but can you see the rib on that and we do have this in stock in grey already um, I'm really sorry because it's not because it just came in it's not got the tags on it yet I think it's maybe called like medium rib rib blended I can't remember if you if you can't find it on the website, send me a direct message and I'll find it later for you and I'll message you. But yeah, we've got this one in grey, which is very similar to this one. And this would be really good for the for the Nico top. So yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to get on to the questions that were sent in beforehand now. Start seeing if I can blast through some of them and then I'll try to keep up with any others that are asking as I'm chatting along. Okay, so somebody's asking, what are some tips for matching plaids? So in the video that I did to go with the Agnes pyjamas, which is like a check. So plaid is just, you know, plaid is similar. It's like some kind of big check. Um, you, there's, so I go through lots of tips on how to match it, but essentially the headlines are, you really have to cut out on the single layer when you're matching it because you, you'll get better accuracy that way. I always draw, or fold lines in my pattern piece that are parallel and at 90 degrees to the grain line or the fold line so that I can use those lines to sort of match up with the with the checks or like this you know the, the pattern that's on it on the fabric and then really you need to I always sort of start with what's going to be most visible when I'm generally when I'm pattern matching or when I'm matching checks or plates or whatever and that you want to kind of go for what's going to be most visible so it's going to be like the center front right that's going to be like the first thing that you want to sort of make sure you've got what you want so have a think about what bit of the check that you want at your neckline and down your center front and then sort of have that as a starting point if it's something that overlaps at the front like this you need to work out where your center front is so that's what, when they overlap, what is the center? So it's not like this center front edge here, because that's going to be like a little bit over from the actual center because they overlap. So you need to find out what your actual center front is, and then you have to cut out your pieces individually, sort of using that as a separate point, kind of mirror, mirroring it over, kind of flipping it over. It's quite hard to explain. It's easier if you can see it. As I said, I'll show you how to do it in the video that came with this kit, which you can get separately as well. Um, and you just need to, you always almost need to sort of try and think ahead and think well once i've sewn this to something else like once the seam allowance is gone then what part of the check is visible that kind of thing you just sort of be thinking ahead like that um so yeah it's not like i think if you sort of like you know if you like the challenge of kind of being precise with something it's actually really enjoyable and not as bad as you would think i think a lot of the time people like get get like worked up about it and think like oh it's really hard it's gonna to be too complicated and it's actually not like you just kind of need to slowly sort of take your time and work through it and it's fine it's fine um i'm tempted to buy the jacket kit in green but it's so similar to my very old school uniform it's holding me back very annoying i have a gray harori jacket and a ready to wear khaki coat <laughs> do you mean do you mean the bottle green or the khaki green I mean, I, I doubt your school uniform was in like a really fashionable, on-trend particular shade of green that had like a really lovely quilted pattern in it. I don't know if that helps. Um, I followed the tips and it worked. The lines helped a great tip. Okay, that's good. Um, okay, so the next question was, can you advise a good option for a beanie, i.e. a bit of stretch, but not so much. It's all floppy, preferably without a pattern as it's for my pattern allergic husband i'm really sorry i actually forgot to bring over the fabric that i was going to show you for this i think the coat the cozy color sweatshirting range would be really nice for that it's got a nice amount of stretch it's got a fleecy back it comes in lots of colors and it's got like like little flecks in it um of color but it's not patterned that's more just part of the texture of the fabric so there is the cozy colors there are also the the there's some fabrics left over that we had from the page hoodie kits and the plateau jogger kits as well which are sweatshirting they would be good for a beanie too they're fleeceback sweatshirting we've got a plum and a teal um and a pink left i'm presuming he probably won't want the pink but you know he might which is fine um 
so yeah we've got that as well and it's plainer it doesn't it's got like a bit of a marled effect in it but doesn't have the little coloured flecks like the cosy colour so I think either of them would be nice um, okay it was the bottle green no I mean I think I think that the, I think the fact that it's got these waves on it is nice like this definitely like the finished article does not give me school uniform vibes so even though it might be ringing a bell in your head for it I suspect that everybody else won't be thinking you're wearing your old school jacket when you wear it I don't feel like that I put it on um, okay, the next question was, would you please comment on how to use non-fusible interfacing on wool being used to make a coat? For example, the closet core Kelly of a fairly flexible medium herringbone flannel lining with cotton batting quilted to the lining. Well, that just sounds really nice combination. If you're using non-fusible interfacing, what you have to do is put it together and then sew it to get sew the two layers together within the seam allowance and then cut the cut the seam allowance of the of the interfacing back to, just to the stitching line so it doesn't bulk out your seam allowance too much and then just like continue as you had been doing and um, somebody's saying that they love the waves i thought it was an emerald green rather than school yeah the I mean the the um the, su the supplier classed it as bottle green that was their like own description of it but it is you know it's quite it is definitely like quite a sort of deep forest green maybe i think it could also be called yeah it's maybe not as vibrant as bot some bottle greens all these things are quite open to interpretation aren't they um okay the next question was how do you get pattern markings onto fabric e.g. dart markings, pivot points, buttonhole markings, anything other than basic outline notches. I've tried carbon paper and tracing wheels using pins and chalk and it always feels like really hard work and not very accurate. I think this is an excellent question and depending on what you're making and what fabric you're using, sometimes it can be super important to make your fabric markings really quite accurate because otherwise it affects like how everything comes together and the accuracy of that. So I personally, this is just me, I personally, when I want to be like really accurate about something is I'll put a tailor's tack in. So I'll get needle and thread with contrasting thread colour and I'll do like a little stitch kind of in and out at that point. And then I'll make sure that it'll leave like a long enough thread tail so that when I separate out the two layers of fabric and I cut it, there's a bit of thread hanging out each side. Now, I find that that works really well for me. That's what I do when I mark the point of darts. And then what and then I would clip into like the legs of the dart and then what I do is use I usually use my Chaco liner this is this one here it comes in lots of different colors and it's basically like a little wheel at the top which turns around and it dispenses loose chalk so it leaves a really sharp crisp line that so then when I come to then sew my dart as like a stitching guide I'll just get a little ruler like my little sort of mini seam gauge ruler and I'll draw a line from where the legs of the dart are to the point of the dart where my tailor's tack is with this and then that's what I'll stitch over and um, so just kind of like connect the two points really and um, so that's what I do there but other other ways that you can sort of accurately mark as well is like the little cartridge pencil which comes with refills like this it just works like a normal cartridge pencil but it's it's chalk you know it's, it's chalk for writing on fabric I also really like these pencils as well. They're really good. They're not too waxy, like they don't really stick on fabric that much. They come with a little pencil um, and you get like the, that, that little sort of brush bit to help brush it off afterwards. Um, so, and then obviously I, I've brought this out because someone else was asking about this chalk in a later question. This is the block chalk. I mean, I don't find this particularly accurate myself, to be honest, because it doesn't really leave like a crisp marking anywhere. Um, so so yeah my 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 own personal preference is that i use tailor's tags but if you find that annoying then i would say you know some kind of combination of these is another alternative and um, okay the next one was ah okay this is the question about this i like using those triangular chalk markers okay well these are square but you can get triangle versions as well but would like tips for sharpening them please because i don't really use them i'm actually not that sure the best way to sharpen them I mean, my guess would be to maybe get like a really sharp knife and like very carefully, obviously moving the knife away from you and um, try and sort of like shave off a little bit so that you get like a pointier bit on it. Maybe. I don't know if anybody else uses these and has a way to sharpen them. Let me know. Um, okay, so the next 
Um, the net, wait a minute, somebody's asking about a, a question I've just answered there. How do you stop Taylor's tax falling out? I think you just need to like handle them with care a little bit more, or you could make it like a bit more of an actual stitch. So, cause usually what I do is just kind of go in through both layers and then back out. So it's literally just like a once and back again. And, and then long enough thread tails. I think having long thread tails helps because then it's less likely to get pulled because even if those thread tails get pulled a little bit, they'll still be in the fabric. But you could kind of go one step further and make it like a bit more of a proper stitch in the fabric using a hand sewing needle so it's still easy to pull out. Um, so yeah, you could do that, but I, I kind of find that a bit annoying. I usually just do like, a, like what I described and then if it does fall out, I'll just put in another one when I need it at the time. Um, oh, somebody's saying that you can buy a special triangular sharpener for them. Interesting. Some people use sandpaper to sharpen them. Good idea. Also, thank you. I sometimes use a bit of tape on Taylor's tacks. Yeah, that's a good idea too. You can get a sharpener tool for the top. You can get a sharpener tool for the chalk triangle slash squares and it's really effective. The Gutterman basting thread is good for tacks to stay in. I've never used that before. Interesting. Um, yeah, so lots of tips there. Thanks for sharing everyone. Okay, the next question was, what is your favourite me made garment? So I think I have maybe been asked this type of question before. I do find it hard to narrow it down because I've been sewing for quite a few years now. Remember sewing like generally as part of my job. So basically like all of my clothes bar a few are ones that I've made and I do love them all. I do love all my clothes. But if I was to pick my favorite ones, it's probably gonna be the ones that I wear the most often. And these fit into two different categories, jeans and coats and jackets. I have quite a lot of jeans. I love them all because I get to wear them all the time. Jeans are a really good thing to make if you want to like wear handmade all the time and you like jeans, obviously. And um, so I do really like my jeans, all of my jeans. And I do really like my coats and jackets because they last so long. Like I've got coats and jackets that I made years ago and they still look really good and I still love them. And they're probably my favorites. And I just, yeah, I've got like, I've got too many coats and jackets really, but I just really like making them. And I've got, I've got one that fits every purpose, even though I don't actually really go many places. And um, yeah. Um, okay, so the next question was, will you be getting the new Fabric Godmother Astra fabric in stock? We don't have it on order at the moment, but I will take note of the request. The next one was how to press creases out of woven velvet, fa woven velvet, velvet fabric. So I would say make sure that you've got water in your iron so that it's got steam. And then what you can do is, so you can get special like I've seen some people talk about these sort of special boards that you can get to, to press stuff like that, fabrics like that on, that have got that sort of pile or that nap on it. Also, that's quite a specialized thing. What you could try instead is just putting like the velvety side, like fa face together with another bit of fabric. So you're kind of, you know, it's like the outside of the fabric faces together and then pressing it. Cause then the piles can sort of like sit into each other a little bit. Um, so, you, so you can try that. Um, yeah, okay, what else am I missing here? Does anyone have any recommendations for a child's t-shirt? A slim 10 year old boy size. I would check out Brindle, Brindle and Twig. Um, they've got loads of really good PDF kids patterns, loads of different styles to choose from as well. Um, what is your top pattern? Do you sell the rib knit? It's the, it's the, the True Bias Nico top. And I don't have the exact fabric, but I've got a really similar one. I've got that. I've got this in a grey, which is like um, it's a viscose blended ribbed fabric here, and um, which is really nice. We've got it. We've still got some in grey, and we've got some in black as well. And then this lovely blue colour too. Um, oh, I meant to ask: Is the Hovia kit fabric washable? It is washable. Um, if you wash, if you wash it a lot, then it can affect the water repellent properties of it. So you don't need to pre-wash it. And I would probably only recommend washing it like if you really need to. I mean, it's a coat. How often do coats and jackets get washed anyway? Probably not that often. Um, but if you really did want to, you can, yes. Um, so yeah. Okay, the next question that I've got on my sheet is um, lengthening a skirt to make a dress. I wasn't totally sure what this question meant. I'm presuming maybe you just want to like lengthen a skirt 
to make it longer. Um, so it depends on the shape of the skirt really, um, I guess. Sorry, I don't actually totally understand the question. If you're watching and you ask me that question, maybe you could like let me know what you mean. Because um, I feel like I'm not really going to talk sense because I don't totally know what it means. Okay, the next question was, I would love to hear a bit about the 2023 Sewing Society plans. So they're exciting, obviously. And we, so there's not going to be a new one in January. We sort of take a bit of a break in January. Um, but we will be back in February and we have been planning a lot of the kits so far because it's just it's just easier and like less stressful to plan them well well ahead of time to make sure that we can get enough of the fabric because yeah it's like hard to get like the quantity of fabric we need sometimes which is why we have to just order it like really far in advance and um, so they're all looking really good and I would say there's there's quite a few fabrics that have got like different types of fibers in them that maybe like you haven't used before or maybe you've heard of but you're not as sure about them so i think it will be a good way to like try different types of fabrics or like blends of fabrics or just sort of be introduced to like different fibers so that's one clue and then i have dropped some hints about this before but i'm happy to be more open about it so in April, it is the 10 year anniversary of G&G &G, and we're going to be having like a really big, amazing, special birthday celebration event in the shop for that. And it's going to coincide with like a really, really exciting kit release, which is which has literally been like months in the making. Like I've almost been like working on it since April this year. <laughs> Um, and it's like a little bit scary, but it's going to be good. And I'm really excited to show you it. But yeah, it's going to be a special one. But I, I, I'm going to like share more about it in the new year, I think, because um, we used to, we actually used to do quite a lot of like in-person events at the shop, like different, yeah, like throughout the year, we'd have different events in the shop and lots of people would come to them. But then, I don't know, I think then when I had like really young kids, it was harder for me to do them as much. And then obviously COVID kind of put an end to all of that. But I feel like it's going to be like a really good event um, you can come to. So, and I want to like give you as much advance notice as possible. So maybe if you like want to make a special trip to the shop and you've got enough time to kind of organise that. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that as well. Um, and then also at some point really, in the near future, I'm going to also introduce you to Becca, who has been helping me a lot. She's now going to be like, she's helping me with the sewing society stuff. And um, she's going to be like helping me make the samples and the videos and everything. And um, so, yeah, I think now that I've got like somebody like a bit more dedicated to help me with sewing society, who's not also responsible for like generally the, like running stuff in the shop. Um, Cause a lot of this, a lot, all the staff help me with the sewing society, but some people are like get pulled in lots of different directions. But Becca's gonna like predominantly be helping me with sewing society stuff. It means I might be able to do like some other stuff um, to kind of add on to the kits. So yeah, that's exciting too. We'll see where that goes. Um, Somebody's saying 10 years, congratulations. I should come in for my first visit to the shop then. Yeah, please do, please do. Okay, so the next, wait a minute, where am I? So the next question on my list is when using tulle fabric, what is the best needle for the sewing machine? I don't I haven't really sewn tulle that much, but apparently the internet says to use a size 70 jersey needle. So I hope that works. I, I'm sorry, I don't have personal experience of that. Um, the next one was, why do some knits have more stretch along the grain line than the cross grain? I think it depends on how and like what way they're knitted. And then also like whether they've got elastane in them or not, or some other sort of like stretchy fiber. Um, but yeah, it's just like due to the, due to like the way that they, the way that they get knitted, it can be quite common. Um, Cause some fabrics have a two way stretch, which means they're like just stretchy one way. Well, and that sounds like contradictory, doesn't it? Um, you get two-way and four-way stretch. So a two-way stretch would be like, it's just stretchy in that direction. A four-way stretch would be like, stretchy in that direction and in this direction as well. Um, so yeah, it's just to do with the way they're made and what fibres are in them. Somebody's saying, oh, that sounds exciting. You can wear your new Hovia jacket to the shop in April. Yeah, April showers, definitely. Okay, so the next 
question was top features to look for when upgrading to a new sewing machine at intermediate sewer. I would say look for a one step buttonhole function, a needle threader, a thread cutter is a good one to, to look for as well. Um, yeah, I would, I would say they're a mark of a good sewing machine. Um, the next question was, what sewing machine needle for satin would you recommend? I personally would probably use, depending on the thickness of it, either 70 or 80 Microtex needle just because it's sharper, so maybe like less likely to snag. Um, the next one was, I noticed that P&P has increased. Is it possible to offer a second class alternative? I know, I'm sorry, we kind of had to like <laughs> adjust the shipping price um, a little bit out of the blue because the, the cost of like paper and the envelopes and everything was like literally, like th the cost of some of that stuff like tripled almost overnight. And we do subsidize the shipping cost already, but there was just like a few other increases that we couldn't anymore. So at the moment we do ship with Royal Mail 24, which under normal circumstances th can, you know, can deliver like the next day or the day after. Obviously it's a bit more hit and miss now. Um, and, you know, we've kind of been happy with that, but you know, I can appreciate that it's, it's difficult when postage goes up. So it, it, it is possible, have a think about it, leave it with me, because I'm trying to look into some other shipping options as well that aren't Royal Mail, just in case anybody wants to not use Royal Mail maybe and like have a bit more information about where their parcel is. Um, so yeah, I'll take note. Okay, the next question was the best tutorial for a narrow shoulder adjustment. So this is when you want to like reduce the distance from here to here. Um, so it can be useful when maybe if you like make something but this seam here of your sleeve is kind of like way down here when it's not supposed to be then you need to like narrow this distance a little bit so I did see that there is one on the Helen's Closet website and I haven't actually I've have you I've used her tutorial to do a broad shoulder adjustment and it works really well it was good so it's the, the it has illustrations that sort of shows you where to cut into the pattern to adjust it so yeah if you look at the helen's closet patterns website for the narrow shoulder adjustment okay the next question was what trends are you seeing for next year's styles and fabrics so i would say definitely in the fabric department we have been seeing lots of like really really bold bright colors did you see that the pantone color for next year is magenta it's obviously quite bright but yeah quite quite large scale like abstract um quite big like big bold patterns lots of colors i feel like it's taken me a while to get used to it but i have seen that from quite a lot of different suppliers as well in terms of styles i'm, I'm not sure i mean i think um, it can be like a little bit different in the sewing pattern world of what trends sort of filter down because maybe sometimes it takes like a, like a while for like very recent current you know high street trends or fashions to like start filtering down into the patterns um so i'm not totally sure on that one we'll see what happens next year i you i don't i I, I don't generally have like insider information on what the sewing pattern companies are going to release other than maybe like i know a couple of weeks ahead of the time so i don't i don't know what patterns are coming in next year um, okay, the next question was, can you easily make the Nina Lee Camden skirt without the pockets? This is just um, like a really, you can make a pinafer, you can also make a skirt. It's just like quite a simple sort of A-line skirt and it's got patch pockets on it. So yeah, definitely you could just like not do the pockets and basically do everything else the same and it would be totally fine. Um, okay, somebody's saying with the changes in Royal Mail, will you continue to have free shipping internationally when spending a certain amount? Yeah, that would it won't really affect that because we ship internationally with DHL anyway, and that's like a sort of whole separate thing from, um, from Royal Mail. So yeah, it won't really affect what we what we currently offer for international shipping. Okay, the next question was, do you have suggestions for a warm lining fabric for both your outer fabric ideas for the grain line fair jacket, please? So I'm trying to remember where this was. If it was like an Instagram post or a newsletter, we had a couple of fabrics that I was suggesting would be good for the fair. One of them is this one here, which is the Taupe Check Shower Proof Fabric. It's 1540 a meter and it's cotton polyester mix. So it's just got this uh, quite a subtle sort of larger scale orangey check in it. It's 
honestly we put some water on this and it just beaded and totally ran right off it didn't seep in at all and then i've also got where i've put it that other khaki water repellent one that i think would be nice for the fair too it's 1460 a meter and it's cotton and nylon um so so that was the ones i was suggesting i mean i think in terms of something warm then i would pro if you wanted to be really warm then you could get some thin slate which is like a special sort of te technical um, insulated fabric, which is really popular for making like really cozy coats. But I think this would feel nice and cozy next to your skin, a cotton flannel, just cause it's like brushed. It feels a little bit thicker. Um, that, so this particular one is the Robert Kaufman Red Mammoth Organic Cotton Flannel. And it's 19 pounds a meter, got this gorgeous big check on it. But we do also have plainer versions as well and various colors as well. Like there's lots of checks with different colors. And then we've also got the Shetland flannel fabric. This particular one's cranberry, but I think that would feel nice and cozy. Um, and I, I, you could you could put an interlining in it as well. You can maybe put some, we've got some, some cotton wadding, which would be nice as like an interlining, but to make it like properly warm, then the thin slate is definitely your best bet on that one. Um, okay, the next question was, where am I? What time are we on? Okay, the next one was a lady who was looking for trousers for her mum who has just been having some problems um, with her legs and some swelling in her legs as well, but she's quite petite. Um, so she was looking for a wide leg trouser pattern and fabric. I guess a knit with stretch. I've got an overlocker, although it scares me. I've been buying cheap cropped yoga type harem pants to keep her going, but I'd love to be make, love to be able to make something nice for her. Um, I was thinking one of either one of these might be nice. This is the so so liberated Ari Ariante pants, and then also this is probably a bit simpler. This one, the made by Ray Luna, and both of them can be made in a lightweight jersey fabric. So I pulled out this one here. This comes in various different colours. This is a tensile medal jersey, and it feels so soft. It's really lovely and soft and slinky. It's breathable. It's wicking. It just feels really lovely and luxurious. So this particular one is the Dark Orchid Tensile Medal and it's £15 a metre. But as I said, it does come in lots of colours and it's got really lovely drape and sort of swish in it as well. So for that sort of fuller style of trouser, uh, you know, it won't feel like big balloon sort of trousers. It will drape and hang really nicely. Um, so yeah, that would be my suggestion there. Um, the next one was, I'm a beginner and I wondered if you could recommend some types of fabric for the lotter dress that are good for winter. I've signed up to a few of the Tilly and the Buttons workshops, but the fabrics recommended are often cotton and linen. Lovely, but not for January in Ireland. So what was it for the lotter dress? Now, I think the thing with the lotter dress is that it's quite, it's got a grown on sleeve. So there's quite a bit of fabric sort of under here. It's got an elasticated waist. So you end up with like fabric blousing quite a bit. And then it's got that skirt that's, um, that's sort of, I guess, A-line really. So then it's quite full in the skirt as well. So I think the thing is that I think that type of dress looks better in something that's going to drape and have movement. But those fabrics tend not to particularly be that warm in themselves. But you could go for something like a viscose twill. So I recently made the lotter dress in a viscose twill. Um, I used one of the Fabric Godmother Jude prints, but I also brought over this one here, which is a nice viscose twill as well. It just feels a bit thicker with that twill weave. This one's the khaki animal print viscose twill fabric and it's 1360 a meter. But what I would suggest that you do really, because the thing is if you if you make that the lotter dress in a physically thicker fabric, which yeah, maybe like feels warmer, it's just gonna be quite sort of tenty and voluminous. Like I don't really know if it would like hang as nicely. So I think you just need to, you just need to layer it up. Like when I, I've made a long sleeve lotta and I wear it with a long sleeve top underneath, I wear it with a vest, I wear it with either thick tights or leggings. Um, so I think it's best in that style of dress if you make it warm just by layering it up rather than actually like picking a fabric that's got a lot of physical thickness to it, which in theory will maybe like make you feel warmer because I just don't think it would hang in the right way. So I hope that helps. Um, Somebody's saying you can make the lot of knit fabrics too. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Probably the, I didn't bring any over to show you, but we do have a loop back jersey fabric, which is made of medal. So it's quite, it's quite drapey, but it is like a little bit thicker. So that, that could possibly work. Um, 
a fine needle cord for the lotter or bamboo jersey. Yeah, I, I, you could you could use a fine needle cord. I do think it's just gonna like it is gonna sort of feel like it's sticking out a bit more just because it is loose. Like it'll feel more bulky. Um. So yeah, somebody's saying I made a lotter in a French terry, which worked well. Lovely. Um. Okay. Do somebody saying do you quilt? I do occasionally, but I'm gonna be honest. It's not my favorite. Um, okay, somebody's saying, do you have anything that would be nice for the hinterland dress, please? The hinterland dress is so versatile. You can use like loads of things with that. You could definitely use one of the, one of those cotton flannels that I was just showing. So the Robert Kaufman cotton flannels, they come in lots of planes and some nice checks as well. We've got rami fabric, which is a bit like linen, but it's got a really nice texture to it. That's good for it as well. We've got some nice denims. We've got some nice thicker tensile denims, which would be lovely for it. Um, a ten, we've got like a ten, about a 10 ounce tensile denim, which would be nice. So it's a really versatile passing you can do loads with that. Okay, the next one was any fabric recommendations to make a tea towel? I've used double gauze, but it doesn't absorb water at all. I have actually made tea towels before, um, inspired by some Kath Kidson tea towels that I had literally years ago, like, I don't know, 15 years ago. And I actually just used um, this, it wasn't this very one, but you know, same kind of fabric. It's the Clark & Clark um, lightweight upholstery fabric. So it doesn't really absorb things right away. I mean, you do have to wash it a few times and don't wash it with fabric softener because that affects the absorbency of fabrics if you use fabric softener. Um, but I have made tea towels out of that before. If you want something particularly absorbent, I don't have any in the shop, I'm afraid, but you could look for bamboo toweling fabric and then like put some nice binding around the edge or something and ba bamboo is very absorbent. Um, so that would be good for like something that's a bit of a thicker tea towel. Okay, the next one was I'm quite small, bust 31, waist 23, hips 31, and I'm not particularly tall. So I was wondering if you had any tips in choosing patterns that weren't going to be too big for me or whether you had any pattern suggestions for more petite people. So I had a little look at a few pattern companies that, that use American sizing that start at size zero. And um, so Megan Nielsen, their size zero is a 32, 24, 34. So it's pretty close. And then Helen's Closet and Closet Core patterns are also, um, their size zero is a 31, 24 and 33. So it's still like a little bit more than your measurements, but it's very close too. So they could work. Then you'd have to just use the shorten and lengthen lines if, if you wanted to make them shorter. But I think if you just generally look for styles that are more fitted or styles that are have got negative ease in them. So for example, like a top like this, which is made out of stretchy jersey fabric and the actual finished garment that you make is smaller than your body because the fabric's then gonna stretch around it. And that'll, that'll help you to feel like you're wearing things that aren't like really big and sort of swamping you. So I hope that helps. Um, okay, somebody's saying try the organic textile company. They had tea towel fabric last time I looked. Yeah, I forgot about them. I used to use them years ago. Yeah, that's a good idea, thank you. Okay, the next one was, I treated myself to the Liberty Tanalon Kingdom Print and Navy at the beginning of the year. I'm thinking of making up the new Friday Pattern Company Saturday skirt. Will this be a good match? I'm worried the skirt will stick out too much or should it drape okay? Now, I'm gonna be honest, I probably wouldn't describe Liberty Tanalon as particularly drapey. I mean, again, it's quite a subjective term. I would say it's more floaty than drapey. Drapey to me is something that's like, well, I would say that this is drapey. Um, obviously it's not just jersey fabric that's drapey, but this is quite drapey. I mean, you can see it like moves around a lot. It swishes, it floats. But yeah, it's just drapey. Like it moves around a lot. Whereas the tan alone here, I would say is more floaty. It does just hold its structure and its shape a little bit more. Um, you know, it doesn't, I don't think it sort of, it just doesn't drape in the same way as like a, a viscose, a rayon, a tensile medal, all of those sorts of fibers. So I, you know, it's not gonna be like firm and be like the Friday, that this skirt is, is, is a long skirt and it does have this sort of shape to it. I mean, I don't think it's gonna like stay <laughs> sticking outy like that but it will definitely stick out more than if you use like a viscose twill or something like that. Um, so yeah, I suppose it just depends how worried about it being sticky outy it's gonna be. 
you know, I would just, you could just get your length of fabric and literally just kind of wrap it around you a little bit and look in the mirror or sort of hold it up in front of you and just kind of get a feel for how it's moving and how it looks and if that's sort of matching with your kind of vision or expectation of what you want your your gar your skirt to look like. Um, okay, the next one was Nico Fabric Suggestions. I think I've mentioned this a few times because that's what I'm wearing tonight. Um, we do also have this one here, um, which is the Honey Mustard Variated Rib Knit Fabric. It's 1930 a meter. And we do also have this in a navy left, I think. Um, so the ribs on it just sort of vary in thickness. It's really nice, nice thickness, nice stretch, nice recovery. It's been a nice, cozy, Nico. Um, the next one was, I went a bit mad in the Pigeon Wishes shop. So I need pattern suggestions for look, using lots of pretty buttons. Um, I was trying to think of some dresses that had button down fronts. The Hinterland dress with, with the version that's got the placket that goes all the way down the front. I made a, we did that as a kit in the summer. And I did a version that had the placket all the way down, uses lots of buttons. Looks nice though. Um, the named Taika dress is also nice. The closet core Fiona sundress, obviously a bit more summery, but lots of buttons down the front there. The cashmere Lennox shirt dress. And then also the closet core, um, the closet core Cali dress option as well. Lots of buttons down the front. So hopefully a few um, ideas there. Um, okay, somebody is saying apostrophe pattern allow you to input your measurements and they make the pattern for your size. Ah, so there you go. If you're, if you're petite and you're looking for um, patterns that fit you then, that's, that's a winner because you put your measurements in and then it spits out the pattern. Okay, the next one was, I've just got a couple left now, so if you do have any other questions, let me know now. Pattern suggestion for a men's turtleneck or could I use the Nico? Um, I'm not sure if I would use the Nico, to be honest. I did find one on Etsy called the Sodi So pattern, which was a men's turtleneck pattern. Um, and then I did also see that Oliver and S have a tutorial on how to turn a t-shirt pattern into a turtleneck. So I guess if you had a t-shirt pattern that you used for, for him or that he, you know, he liked the fit of, then you could turn it into a turtleneck using that Oliver and S tutorial. Um, I am patterns have, are quite popular for men's patterns. They have like a basic t-shirt pattern, so you could try that. Okay, the next one was, what lining would you recommend for black and gold sateen? Um, so we've got this fabric here, which is a nice lining fabric. This is black Bemberg Coupro lining fabric and it's 1060 a meter. Sorry, it looks a bit crunched because it's been just the way it's been in the shelf, but nice and slippy and um, yeah, won't, won't give you any static or anything. And then the last question was, I'm planning on making an orange sweatshirt slash jumper and it's either between the cozy colors or the terracotta blend fabric, but it depends on the ribbing as to which I choose. So, and then she said, we've got that you have three orangey coloured ribbing slash cuffing, which is the best match. So I've got both of the fabrics here. Um, I did bring a cosy colour over for the person who was asking about the beanie earlier. This was the cosy colours I was meaning. Um, that comes in lots of different colours with the fleecy back and then the little flecks on it. So this particular one is the burnt orange multi-fleck cosy colours. It's 1860 a metre. And then I'm just going to hold up some of the orange cuffing and ribbing and things that we have. So I think that one is not the best match. Um, so not that one. And then these are our two little cuffings here. The light's maybe not showing it up that great, but I think this one is probably, it's not an exact match. It's probably a better match than what the video is showing here in the light. In real life, it looks like a bit of a better match. As I said, it's not exact. This is a bit darker. Um, and then it's got that fun little gold stripe on it as well. So you could use that. I think this one's probably a bit dark. Um, then for the terracotta viscose blended fabric here. So this is the same fabric that we used for that Esme cardigan, but obviously terracotta. Um, it's 1480 a metre. I would just use the same fabric for this one if you were using this. It is actually a bit like a rib fabric. Like when you stretch it, you can kind of see like the lines of a rib in it. So it would be totally fine to use that 
as the cuff or you know neck band or whatever of, of whatever you're making you can also do that with the cozy colors too i've made loads of jumpers where i've put done the cuff neck band and hem band just in the same cozy colors fabric um, but obviously if you did want it to be that you know the ribbing or cuffing then that there is that option there but for this one i would say just stick to using the same fabric um, okay, so that was all the questions that were sent in beforehand that I managed to add to my list. Sorry if you sent one in and I didn't read it out. Sometimes, depending on what time of the day they come in, I don't have time to put them on my list. But you can always just leave me, if you're watching it back on, on Instagram, you can leave me a comment there. You can leave me a comment on YouTube as well. Um, you can always email the shop too. Um, and it's going to be next year that I'm back again for another Instagram live. So yeah, this is the last one of 2022 so I hope you do all have a really lovely Christmas and I just want to say a massive thank you for watching all of my Instagram lives and um, I do really enjoy doing them I think it's such a lovely way for me to like hear what people are asking about and what you're making and hopefully I've given you lots of inspiration and advice and guidance and that you are getting on okay in your sewing journey so there's always something new to learn isn't there new things to see um Somebody's saying, I love a contrast rib in neutral colours like black, grey, cream. Okay, I might have missed the context of that now, I'm sorry. Um, lots of people are saying thanks. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you all. Um, thanks for brightening up my Monday evenings. Likewise, have a truly wonderful Christmas. You're very welcome, everyone. It's been really lovely to chat to you all. And I, I really appreciate all the comments and like advice you share with each other as well. That one, one, several brains is definitely better than one brain. Um, so it's really good that you guys can like share your experiences as well. Because, yeah, I think collectively we've all done lots of things and got lots of experience. So it's good to share all of that. Um, so, yeah, it's really nice to see all your Christmas messages. Um, I hope you get a chance to do some sewing over Christmas, especially in that like weird bit between Christmas and New Year. Um, I'm like now trying to like think if I can fit in any projects before Christmas, which is just like kind of un unrealistic, but you know what it's like. If you're a dressmaker, you love a deadline, don't you? You just like want to just fit something in last minute. That is me right now. Um, so yeah, I'm seeing what I can fit in, but I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, everyone. And, um, you know, if you need, still need any help or advice or anything, you can always just still email the shop. Um, you can send me a message on Instagram as well. I don't know how quickly I'll be able to get back to you sometimes, but um, yeah, we are still here. Everybody's working up until 23rd. So yeah, we're still around if you need any help or advice. If you are waiting for a Hovia Sewing Society kit from us, send out positive vibes into the universe that everything is going to work out uh, towards the end of this week. Feeling confident. I think we can do it. Um, but yeah, I'm st still some nice messages coming in. Thanks, everyone. Okay, I'm going to head off now, but have a lovely Christmas. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and I'll see you for more chats in 2023. <laughs> Bye.